Guten Abend, and I hope everyone's in for the surprise presentation in English right in the middle. So today I'll be talking about X-ray imaging and how we use it to peep deep within our catalysts. So our sun emits a wide range of electromagnetic radiations all the way from high energy shorter wavelengths which are gamma rays and x-rays to longer wavelengths of microwave and radio waves. Luckily, the Earth's atmosphere acts as a protective shield and the shorter wavelengths do not reach us on the Earth's surface. Only the visible light and some of the longer wavelengths reach us. So if the x-rays do not reach us, how do we know about them and how do we discover them? So the X-rays were actually first discovered by Wilhelm Röntgen in Germany and when he was at the Würzburg University in Bavaria. So he was working with X-ray, uh, with cathode ray tubes, as you see on the screen, and there was a fluorescent sheet next to it and he found out that the fluorescent sheet glows. And then he was curious, why does that happen? He then covered the X-ray tube with a solid black cardboard. And then he realized that the fluorescent sheet that was like one meter away, that still glows a bit. And that was surprising for him. It's like, how can some invisible radiations reach something that's far away? And this was unknown back then. Since he discovered some unknown radiation, he named it as X-rays. X for unknown, like we study in maths, if you remember from high school maths, X is the unknown. And that's how X-rays were discovered in 1895. And he also very soon realized that these X-rays can be used for medical imaging. And actually, the first X-ray medical imaging was that of his wife's hand. And for this glorious discovery, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901. So before the x-rays were discovered, doctors would cut open a human being, as you see in the middle, probe deep inside what's going wrong, maybe there's something defective or some infection or something else that they're not able to probe from outside, and then they would cut back, uh, and then would stitch back the human. And the human, is definitely not, not as happy as it looks here. <laughs> but luckily, at least, or at least I was born way after that, so x-rays were there when I was born, and I did not have to go through any such ugh, severe surgeries like this, and we had x-rays to our rescue. So when x-rays produce x-ray radiographs, the doctors can diagnose the humans they can see the bone defects, like you can see here. They can see fractures. Even X-ray imaging of the brain can show us tumors, blood clots, hemorrhages, etc. And doctors have no longer have to cut open the brain. So this was a big advancement in medical science. Now that makes me wonder. So can I, being a scientist in the field of chemical sciences, study my material without having to cut it open, without damaging it? And the answer to this is a big yes. So, <laughs> yes, everyone's happy when we don't have to cut us open. And now I'll show you what makes me happy as well. So when I place my catalyst in front of the X-ray source, here I obtain something known as X-ray projections. I can then study the structure of my catalysts and I do not have to cut it open anymore. I do not damage my catalyst. I study them as it is. And this makes me happy now. No cuts needed for my catalyst. Although it does not feel any pain, still, I have less work to do. So first of all, let me introduce you what is a catalyst. So imagine a human being that has to climb all the way up the mountain and travel from position A to position B. And he slowly starts walking up the mountain after a certain point of time. It's difficult for him and it gets exhausting. And then let's say we give him a vehicle 
and he uses the vehicle to go from point A to point B. So this is faster, convenient, and accelerates the process for him. This is exactly what a catalyst does for me. Like a vehicle accelerates the travel, a catalyst accelerates the reaction process or allows the reaction process to take place. And let's delve into a very specific topic now. Catalysts are not only present in chemical reactions or processes, industrial processes, but they are also present in our everyday lives, such as in automobiles. Cars emit a lot of pollutants, which include nitric oxides, carbon dioxide, volatile organic compounds, which are VOCs, and sulfur dioxide, to name a few. Now, the catalytic converters are also present at the back of your cars to prevent these harmful gases from being emitted to the environment. So nitric oxides have to be eliminated from the, in, uh, from the emissions, and they have to be converted into harmless nitrogen, which can then be easily released to the environment. To make sure that this process takes place, ammonia, or AdBlue, is added to the catalytic converters. Maybe those who have diesel engines or diesel cars, you are familiar with AdBlue. So in this process, why does uh, m excess ammonia is released to the environment when it does not undergo full conversion or does not undergo the complete reaction, and why certain reactions occur? To understand this, I wanted to use x-rays to study my catalyst. So I took a small part of my catalyst, as you see here, a cross section in the black was taken, and then I exposed this to x-rays, and I obtained a projection at one angle. I rotate my sample, I obtain a projection at another angle. I keep on rotating from 0 to 180 degrees, and then I obtain a series of projections, as you see in the center, from x-ray imaging. Using these series, I can then reconstruct my 3D volume. From 2D projections, I get the volume. And then you can see how my catalyst structure looks like. We can see all the pores inside. What does the structure look like? How does the volume of the catalyst look like? Where is actually my catalyst located? And everything else. But it's important to note, X-ray imaging is not just limited to structural changes. I could also study chemical changes in my catalyst. I had three different compositions, which were single layer, dual layer, and mixed layer of copper and platinum. And it is known that dual layer or mixed layer is actually more efficient in eliminating the excess ammonia and reducing the release of nitric, nitrogen oxides from a car as compared to a single layer catalyst. And my current study involves understanding the changes in, in local chemical species of the catalyst material, and how does the catalyst behavior change, and how does it affect the reaction efficiency, so that we can develop better catalysts for our cars. The powerful X-ray imaging, now we can see that it allows us to ha understand the structural changes as well as chemical changes. It is especially because of this reason that makes it very impactful. We can have a complete understanding of our material properties from various aspects, and then we can design better catalysts and make our reaction process more efficient and release like, less harmful gases to the environment. So this is a picture of my group from KIT and from DAISY enjoying in the sun Luckily, the sun's rays reaching to the Earth's surface does not contain X-rays. But we love to play with X-rays in the laboratories. And I assure you, this is strictly confined to safe zones where we don't harm anyone. And hope you guys had fun knowing about my research as much as I have fun working on it. Thank you for your attention. Srashtas Rita Das, dein Applaus! Woohoo! Thank you so much!